A good martini is my go-to cocktail. So in today's video, we're gonna learn all about martinis. We're gonna learn how to order them. We're gonna learn how to make a few different types. And we're gonna go over the very precise way that I order my martini. And if you stay to the end, I'm gonna share with you why James Bond has been ordering his martinis wrong all along. So let's just jump right into it. Now, ordering a martini can be tricky. There's lots of terms involved, and if you don't know what's going on, you may get tripped up. So let's make a little bit of a martini cheat sheet before we jump into actually whipping them up. Now, a lot of these terms apply to cocktails in general, but martinis are a popular one that have a variety of ways of order them. First off is a term that you're probably not gonna use to order your martini, but it has been done, and it's important to understand the meaning of, which is neat. Any cocktail that's served neat is simply just the spirit. If you add anything else to that, it's technically not neat. It's not chilled. It's just an unchilled glass with an unchilled spirit straight up. And that's another way you might hear people order it straight up, which is the same as neat, but is different than up. If you hear somebody ordering any cocktail up, especially a martini up, that simply means the cocktail will be either shaken or stirred and then strained into the glass without any ice. A martini on the rocks is a martini that is shaken and stirred to chill and then served on ice. And it's also served in a different type of glass. With a twist simply means the twist of a citrus zest. Usually the default citrus is a lemon, but it can be other things. But if you order a martini with a twist, it's gonna be a lemon twist. Now two terms you might hear are dry martini and a wet martini. And these two are the opposite, even though the names are weird. When you order a martini dry, that means you're getting less vermouth. It, it creates a little bit of a stronger, sharper cocktail. When you order a martini wet, which is sort of how it generally comes if you don't order it dry, it comes with a little bit more vermouth Vermouth is a little sweet, so it creates a little bit of a smoother, more balanced cocktail. And then you got a dirty martini, which is when olive brine is added to the cocktail itself. And a filthy martini is just an extra dirty martini. Next up, let's talk about the gear. And I like playing bartender, so having the right gear makes this process fun. So even if you don't drink a lot, having this stuff on hand, it doesn't have to be expensive, will make entertaining, especially now with the summer coming up, busting out a cool cocktail with the cool gear. It's part of the theatrics of hosting. So here I got a double-sided jigger. This is a one ounce measurement. This is a two ounce measurement. And inside there are like quarter ounces, half ounces. So you got all sorts of measurements here. This is going to be our mixing glass. There are glasses designed specifically for this with a little fluted edge. So I'm just gonna use a larger, taller glass than the glasses that I'm gonna to use to serve a cocktail. And then I've got a little strainer here. Now these two are martini glasses. I just do not like these glasses. So I use a coupe glass. This is a glass specifically designed for cocktails that are served up, which again means chilled and then served with no ice. And then this is a rocks glass. This is what you would serve like a whiskey on the rocks, any sort of rocks cocktail, you would serve in one of these. This is noticeably smaller than the thing I'm going to mix it in. And with cocktails on the rocks, you don't serve a lot of liquid in them, so you don't need a big one. Next, we have the alcohol. Now, if you go to a bar and you just say, I'd like a martini, they're gonna make it with gin. That's the classic. Now, I don't like gin and I love vodka. So when I order a martini, I order a vodka martini and I specifically ask for Tito's. Tito's is, in my opinion, one of the best vodkas you can get. Always widely available, reasonably priced, and it's delicious. And what we do is we keep it nice and cold. A martini is best as cold as possible. It's a refreshing drink. So if you can keep the liquor cold, that's ideal. So today we're only making vodka martinis because they're both clear. I don't need to show you how to make a gin martini. You just replace the gin with the vodka if you're more of a gin person. But I'm a vodka guy, so that's what we're going with. And then of course, for martinis, you need some vermouth. And now you can't freeze this like you can a vodka. There's not enough alcohol in this, so I just keep it in the refrigerator when I know I'm making cocktails. But we also want this to be a dry vermouth. We don't want it to be the sweet vermouth, so just keep that in mind. Now we need some lemon twists. So you can just basically start like this. Not a lot of pith. We can keep it rustic like this. We can do one that's a little bit more perfectly made. Cut one side on an angle, the other side on an angle. So you're left with something like this, and you can just sort of start to twist it. I'm gonna save the twist for when I'm gonna make the cocktail, because when you twist it, you expel the oils in the skin, which is a lot of the flavor that we wanna use. So you wanna save that. The bartender at the Beekman Hotel in downtown New York City made me a martini and it was delicious. And he told me that the, the best company for the olive brine, if you want a dirty martini, is this company, Filthy. And so when I went to go purchase some of the olive brine, the pack I purchased came with these individually packaged olives for garnish, which I think is a thoughtful way to package them and makes it nice to have when you're playing bartender at home. Everybody knows that James Bond ordered his martinis shaken, not stirred. 
But every good bartender knows that a martini should never be shaken, it should always be stirred. Because when you mix a cocktail and you add ice to it, you're chilling it and you're diluting the cocktail. When you shake it, you're not only chilling and diluting, but you're introducing air and you're breaking up ice shards into the cocktail, clouding it up and making it icier and more diluted. So stirring is ideal for a martini, so you can have a nice clear martini and it's nice and clean and strong, which is what you want. Cocktails with citruses, egg whites, dairy in them, margaritas, those are the things you wanna shake and beat some air in and make them icy. Gin has all these delicate juniper notes and they actually can be damaged and muddled when you shake them. Now if you're curious why James Bond liked them shaken, stay tuned a little bit later and I'll tell you the reason. But first we gotta make our first cocktail. And now I did go over neat, but neat is simply just taking a glass and pouring vodka in it. So I'm not gonna cover it because you're probably not gonna order that. The first one we're gonna make is a classic vodka martini, which without having to specify will come up and wet, which means it's gonna use vermouth. First up, we're gonna need a little bowl of ice. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get our coupe glass or a martini glass and we wanna get that chilled by simply just adding a bunch of ice to it. That will chill while you prepare the cocktail. Now we can get our mixing glass. Now just as a rule of thumb, when I'm making a martini, I'm thinking it's going to be five parts vodka to one part vermouth. And so for the proper amount, that means it's gonna be two and a half ounces of vodka to a half ounce of vermouth. So first we wanna get the vodka and the vermouth into the mixing glass. I'm gonna do a two ounce pour of the vodka and then a half ounce pour. And then the vermouth gets a half ounce pour as well. Once the alcohol is in, then we can add ice to the mixing glass. And we wanna really jam it in. Then we're gonna wanna take our mixing spoon and we're gonna insert the mixing spoon along the interior of the glass. And we're gonna use the curved backside of the spoon and run it along the interior of the glass, stirring the ice. Mixing the cocktail, chilling it, and allowing some of that ice to melt and dilute the cocktail. We wanna stir that for about 30 to 40 seconds. Then you wanna discard the ice from the coupe glass, then add a strainer on top of the mixing glass and pour the cocktail into the coupe glass, garnish it with an olive garnish. This is a classic vodka martini up, Centani. It's strong, obviously, there's a lot of vodka in it, but it has a little bit of this sweet balance in the back from the vermouth. It's a little too forward for me. It's not how I order my martini, but if you like a strong cocktail that is still super refreshing, this is a good way to go. Now say you wanted it even stronger. Say you wanted it dry. Gonna start the same way. We're gonna chill the glass, and the only difference is we're adding just a very tiny amount of vermouth, so we're gonna kick up the amount of vodka. So I'm going two ounces of vodka. Then in with the ice, and then give the cocktail a stir to chill it and dilute it. My stirring form is improving drastic. If you can stir it really fast, it's gonna chill it really well. There's a nice wrist action involved, and if you hold it in a certain way, the spoon should spin in your hand as it spins around the interior of the glass. Now here's the big difference. We're gonna empty out the ice in the glass, and then I'm simply gonna pour a tablespoon or two of the vermouth into the glass and just swirl it around the edge to coat the interior of the glass. Then we can discard that vermouth and then strain the vodka martini into the glass. This time I'm gonna go with a lemon twist. I wanna twist it over the cocktail so its oils get released into the drink. Give it a run around the rim and then drop it into the cocktail. Cheers. Now this is a dry martini with a twist. Strong vodka, but with that lemon, it really kind of takes it to like a limoncello place to me. It's good. A few sips and you already feel it, but it's good. It's still not my go-to. Now my order is a dirty Tito's martini on the rocks with a twist, no olives. And it can be a mouthful, but it is the way I like to drink it. So let's jump into it. So now we're gonna chill the glass, but this time we're gonna use a rocks glass. Now, whenever I order a good martini, I always gotta ask the bartender about the secrets. And it turns out when you order a dirty martini, you can't just use any brine from any old jar of olives that you get in the supermarket. That in and of itself is another ingredient in the mix that needs to be considered. So I asked him, so what do you use? And he told me, filthy. This isn't an ad. I've been looking long and hard for a good olive brine that is like a cocktail level quality, and this is it. So I'll leave a link down in the description. They even came with the olives and they come with the whole starter pack for martinis. And we're just gonna add an equal amount of brine as we do the vermouth, maybe a little bit more if you like it dirtier. Depending on the brine, you might need to add a little bit more or a little bit less than also depending on your taste. But I kinda like it somewhere between dirty and filthy. If you're gonna serve drinks on the rocks, you're gonna want some big ass ice cubes. These are gonna melt slowly and so that means they're not gonna dilute the cocktail that you made. They're gonna stay a firm cube of ice for much longer than a normal set of ice cubes. You just get some 
some silicone trays. You can get them on the internet. They're very easy to do. You can get them in balls or squares. So now we're just gonna get our mixing glass and add our two and a half ounces of vodka, our half ounce of vermouth, and the half ounce of olive brine. And when I order this and I say no olives but dirty, I always get a weird look. But hey, I hate olives. I love olive oil. I like how the brine sort of takes this cocktail and makes it like a little bit more interesting, a little bit more complicated. This is just how the cookie crumbled for me. And that's how I arrived at drinking it this way. And I prefer on the rocks because it takes me a minute to drink this sucker and I like to keep it cold. Then fill the mixing glass up with ice and begin to stir now again if your vodka wasn't chilled prior to making this it's gonna dilute more so you got to keep that in mind like the way you stir it how much dilution happens allows you a bit of control in this recipe so once you've mastered your stirring technique and the cocktails chilled we're gonna take one of our beautiful large square ice cubes we're gonna gently place it into the rocks glass we're gonna strain the martini into the glass and so since I hate olives and I always just take it out of my glass and leave it on the table I specifically say no olives do a nice rustic lemon twist around the edge into the cocktail and chin chin. To me, there's nothing as balanced as a dirty martini on the rocks with a lemon twist. As that ice melts, it just kind of softens it a bit the longer you drink it, keeping it nice and cold though. The lemon adds the freshness, the brine adds like a savoriness that kind of makes you kind of want to just keep drinking it. It also is like refreshing and addicting at the same time. One of my favorite cocktails ever. Part of being a good host is being able to make a good cocktail. Now you got another tool in your tool belt to whip out when you want to set up a nice bar, play bartender, and whip up some beautiful martinis. Now after we learned all this and we know that we would never shake a martini, why did James Bond always order it that way? The answer is simply that Ian Fleming, the creator of Bond, preferred his martinis shaken. So he simply just applied that to the character that he created and that's it. Don't take your cocktail advice from a fictional character. Anyway, that's all that I have today. All the recipes for today are gonna to be linked down in the description. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself, have a cocktail, and go feed yourself. A classy cocktail needs a classy recipe to go with it. So I suggest this creamy mushroom risotto we made last week. You're gonna love it. Thanks for watching.